Welcome to another edition of Green is Good, and we're so honored to have with us Rob Harmon. He's the director of the Meats Coalition, among other things which we're going to talk about today. Welcome to Green is Good, Rob. Great to be here. Thank you. You know, Rob, this is the Go Green edition of Green is Good. Tell me about why you're here today and why the Go Green conference is so important to what you're doing and trying to accomplish at the Meats Coalition. Well, there are a lot of people here who are really interested in solving big problems. Okay. And uh, the Meats Coalition was created and the Meats Transaction Structure for Energy Efficiency was created to try to get around the things in the energy efficiency marketplace that are preventing us from doing energy efficiency at scale. Gotcha. So I like to I like to uh, go after problems where you got a lot of people who want to do something and a lot of people who want to have it happen and something that's broken in the middle. And I like to try to figure out if I can fix that broken thing. And uh, we did it with this, so I'm pretty excited. And we're, we're talking about uh, today creating an energy utility that really works for the future. Well, yeah, we're talking about how the utilities that already exist today can survive in a world where the society is asking them to do much deeper energy efficiency. And in the existing transaction structure that they use, when they do energy efficiency, they sell less of their product. Gotcha. And we don't normally ask businesses to do that, right? And there are good reasons why we've asked them to do that, and there are good reasons <laughs> for them to do it. But it is still a, it is still a real challenge if you want to do it at scale. You know, it's one thing if you were to ask an apple farmer to sell one fewer apple. If <laughs> right. you ask him to stop selling half his apples, you it's gotta, a problem. It's a bit of a problem. And uh, and so we think we've got a solution that will really help utilities address that problem. That's great. Which will also help building owners go deeper in their buildings and investors be able to invest for longer terms and a bunch of other things that are important. Before we get talking about the Meats Coalition and you being the director there, plus also the other company, uh, the Energy RM, where you're the president and CEO, I want to talk a little bit about the Rob Harmon story. Talk a little bit about your journey in sustainability, where you got inspired, how you got fired up about it, which led to this great leadership role that you have today. Well, it's a long story. Um, it started probably when I was 16, and my father put together an energy expo in Brooklyn, New York, where I lived. Really? This was 1981. Wow. And I saw my first electric car. And what I also saw there was a group of people, the vendors, the same kind of people you see here today, yeah. who were making a living doing things that helped other people and helped the planet they were living on. So they were helping the economy and helping the, all of us and helping the planet. And I went, well, what's wrong with that? And I kind of never looked back. And then when I went to college, I was a financial aid student in college, so I had to do a work study. And I saw in the college, I guess it was a newspaper, there was this job for energy assistant. And so I read the description, I went to talk to the guy who was the energy manager on the campus. And uh, we hit it off. And so I was the guy on the campus that would go around and read the energy meters and put insulation up on the walls and That's weather strip the doors. And this was in 1982. And which college was this at? Hampshire College in Western Massachusetts. Western Massachusetts, okay. That's awesome. So you really had the bug very young. Really young, I, and I built my whole career around it. So it's, it's really, it's all I've really done. And so you're a Brooklyn homeboy? South side of Chicago and then Brooklyn. Which are two cities and two areas of this country that are on fire for green right now and sustainability. That's right. That is just great. Um, so. Going back to w where we are today, at the, green, at the Go Green Conference here in downtown, beautiful downtown Seattle, and this Meets Coalition, which you're director of. And for our audience members out there that want to learn all about Rob and his colleagues' great work, they could go to www.meets, M-E-E-T-S, coalition.org. Meets, M-E-E-T-S, coalition.org. What are you doing at Meets? And explain the interrelationship of your job at Meets, your hat at Meets, mm -hmm. and also Energy RM and how they interrelate sure. and how you can, you know, how you're really helping change the world and make it a better place. Well, Energy RM, the technology company that I that I run right now, right. is um, they, they provide the energy efficiency meter that is the underpinning for the transaction structure. Gotcha. And when I came on uh, to serve as the CEO, the idea was that uh, Energy RM was going to be the development company with a meter to, that did all these developments. And what we discovered, of course, very early on as we moved through it, was that you couldn't really be the meter company and the developer because nobody's going to buy stuff from you if you're telling them how much they're going to buy. So what we decided to do was to separate the meter company from the folks working on the transaction structure. And at the moment, I'm wearing both of those hats. And we're, we're working through, in the early days, you got to wear multiple hats. Uh, but the idea here is that the, the meets coalition structure is much more of a nonprofit structure okay. where we're educating people around the transaction structure. That's why it's a .org. Yeah. And, uh, and Energy RM is really a straight up technology company. 
that sells technology for a profit. Yeah, it's a it's a SaaS company. It's software as a service. It's all in the cloud. Talk a little bit about energy utilities. What's broken with the model, and why is your model better? Well, really, nothing was broken about them for a really long time. It's important to understand the reason we set them up was to electrify the country. Mm. And we did this, we started this probably about 100 years ago. And when we were doing that, there weren't that many people, but the population was growing fast and there was an awful lot of resource. So we put incentives in place to make them go and extract resources and burn them and build a whole bunch of power lines and electrify the place like crazy, which because there was this great correlation between extracting resources and improving the quality of lives. Right. Right? It was a direct correlation, right? Basically the more you can dig up and burn, the better it got for everybody. Right? It's all about speed and growth. Well that's right. And and that works really well when you have a, a relatively small and growing population. Right. And you have a lot of atmosphere right. or a lot of resource. <laughs> right, right. right. When you start running out of the the atmosphere's ability to absorb all of that and you have a a big, huge population, those incentives get you the wrong outcomes. That's right. Right? Right. They don't get you the outcomes you want. And, and so what's happening now, what we're beginning to see um, everywhere now, is that the rapid ex um, extraction of especially fossil fuel resources, the, the faster you, you extract those now, the lower the quality of life. Right. It's right, going the right. other direction, right? But all the incentives are still 100 years old, mm. right? So it wasn't set up wrong to begin with. It was set up right to begin with. Now we just need a different set of outcomes. We need to shift the paradigm. Well, we do. And and the problem, of course, is that people are used to the old incentive structures. And, and actually, it functions kind of like an addiction, mm. right? And well, this is the way we've always done it, right? Um, this isn't hurting me, right? I'm only doing my little part, right? I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of has some, some um, similarities to addiction, right? And what happens is that that now that the regulators are saying to the utilities, we want more energy efficiency out of you, Right. what they're saying is, but wait a minute, if this scales, we're selling half the units we're selling now, how do we survive in that world? Mm. Right. If we're not building power plants and we're not building big transmission lines, which is where we make all our money, Right, and our unit sales are going away. I thought you guys wanted us to be around to like give you electricity and stuff, you know? So we're at this kind of train wreck place, right? And so what we did with meets, which is the metered energy efficiency transaction structure. Okay. Same name, that's why we call it meets because right. that's way too long, right? That's good. I'm glad you don't frame that up. Right. But the idea here is that that building analytics and software is finally good enough that you can build the piece of technology that the Energy RM team built. Okay. And what it does, to, to keep it sort of at a very high level, yep. what it does is it meters the difference between how a building would perform or did perform pre-retrofit okay. and, how, and, and how it's performing after the retrofit. Okay. How it's performing after the retrofit is pretty easy because you have the utility bills, right? Right. So what you're really trying to do is to maintain uh, an algorithm that tells you how the building would have performed had it not been retrofit, which gotcha. is really not as hard to do as you think it might be. Right. So I'm right. not going to get into all the details. No, that. no, no. But essentially, think about it this way. If you have that upper line, which is uh, how the building should be, would be performing Performing if it hadn't been retrofitted, right? And you now have the new utility bills. All you have to do is subtract one from the other, and you know how much energy efficiency you're getting. Wow! Right? And what happens now is you have another meter reading on the building, which your first meter reading is the normal utility bill. Right. Your second meter is how much energy got saved. Wow! And they're both measured in the same units. Let's say kilowatt hours for electricity. Right? What happens then? Because you're metering it, you can start to transact on it as a real thing. So normally what we do with energy efficiency is we say, hey, you know, we'd like you to install an uh, energy efficient light bulb. Here's five bucks, why don't you go do it? And then we kind of hope you do it after we gave you the five right, bucks. Right, 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 right. Maybe you put it in a closet and you never turn it right. on, right? But we're not metering any of that usually, right, right? right? So what this does is it allows the utility to see on a meter how much energy efficiency the building is producing. Wow. And there are two big problems with the energy efficiency paradigm today. One of them is what's called split incentives. And okay. what that means is, let's say you own a big commercial office building, okay? And you, it's full of tenants, and they pay the energy bills. That's the way it usually works, right? right? It's a pass-through. So now some guy comes to you and he wants you to, make, to upgrade your building because it's the right thing to do, right? You say, okay, so I'm gonna go borrow a million dollars, and my tenants' energy bills are gonna go down. How do I pay back the million dollars? Right. And the answer, of course, is, well, you can't. Right, so you don't do anything, which is the reason that all the commercial office buildings in America, well, vast majority of them, are really, really energy inefficient. 
gotcha. because there's no economic, um, there's no investable proposition because the tenants' bills go down. So the tenants get all the benefits of better lighting and all that stuff and their energy bills go down, and then a year later they leave and they don't care anyway, right? I mean, the, 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 the tenants in the buildings, they're trying to make coffee or run a law firm or... They're transient. Know, well, they're transient and they have another business they're paying attention right. to. And their energy bill in a commercial office building is a very small portion of their operating expenses. It's not the, it's, that's the noise to their core business. Exactly. So, so, oddly, what we're doing in the current transaction structure is we're giving them all the cash flow, even though they don't care. And we're taking the cash flow away from the investors and the building owners right. that we would need to pay back the loans that we use to upgrade the building. So no right. it doesn't work. Right. Right? right. And at the same time, the utility is seeing the energy bills fall and all their units go away. Right. So you've got two pretty broken things here. Right. So utilities are having a hard time liking it. Right. right? Even the regulators want them to do it, so they do what the regulators tell them. But the they, landlord's not all that happy. Well, that landlord doesn't really care because the tenants are paying the bills. Right. right. And he's not going to borrow the money and the tenants don't really care, right? That's kind of broken. So what we did, because we can meter the energy efficiency, we take that meter reading and we deliver the meter reading of the energy efficiency in kilowatt hours to the utility. Got it. The utility then takes that meter reading and says to the tenants in the building or the building owner, you now have two meters on your building. One of them is the energy we delivered to you in kilowatt hours, and the other is the savings in kilowatt hours. Okay. If you add those two together, what you get is the old energy bill for the building, right? Savings right. plus current use is right. old use, right? Exactly. And all of a sudden, two things happen. The utility no longer loses revenue because they're charging the building for both things. So they're charging the same amount to the building that they charged before, which means that they don't have any lost units in the system and they don't have any lost revenue. So the utility is happy. They've been made whole. They've been made whole, right? The other thing that happens is you have all this cash now that's in the transaction because the utility just collected it all, right? It didn't go away, right? Right. So the um, the utility then takes a chunk of that money and maybe some incentive money they have because now they have an extra kilowatt hour they can sell somewhere, and they combine those numbers in some fashion that they're comfortable with into what they call a power purchase agreement, which is the way they buy energy from wind farms and gas plants and nuclear power plants and other things, right? The way, the way you know, utilities tend to transact on, on buying energy is either with, um, with facilities they own or facilities that they contract with in the power purchase agreement. So what, what the utility can then do is sign a power purchase agreement for energy efficiency. And what we did here in Seattle with Seattle City Light and the Bullet Center was we put together a 20-year power purchase agreement between the Bullet Center, which and actually it was the Bullet Foundation who was the investor, and Seattle City Light. So the Bullet Foundation, which ponied up all this money to make the building greener, yeah. now has a 20-year stream of revenue coming from Seattle City Light, a very creditworthy entity, wow. to repay those loans. Mm. And, and the tenants get this astonishingly beautiful space, and they pay the same energy the bills they pay in a regular space. So what? No one cares, right? right? right, right. So all the cash flow gets restored, the utility remains whole, and the investors have a 20-year stream of cash flow to repay the investment. Wow. You've now basically taken the model we've used to build power plants for 100 years, and you've, you have used that model to transform the energy market again, right? The utilities use this model to build all this infrastructure, and now we're going to let them use the same model to transform the infrastructure into green infrastructure. That's amazing. It's marvelous. So you've done that here at the Bullet Center. Mm -hmm. A couple of questions. Is this now the new paradigm, and now can you take this nationally? Can you take the show on the road? Well, the reason we have the Meets Coalition is because there are people all over the country who are interested in trying to do this. Wow. And what we want is to be able to get them all the information, right? It took a long time right. to do what a, what a colleague of mine says calls running the pipe cleaner through the transaction structure, right? I mean, you got to have a meter services agreement. You got to have a PPA contract, power purchase agreement contract. Right. You got to have agreements between the investor and the and the and the building owner. You got to all this paperwork. And when you do it for the first time, not easy. Not easy. I've now done three things in my career that people told me couldn't be done. Yes. Every one of them takes three years to do the first one, right? right. Once you've done the first one and right. people can look at it and kind of photocopy it, right? Right. It goes much faster. Right. 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 So we've 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 penned this deal and it's underway. Okay. 
and uh, people around the country have been calling in saying, how do I participate in this? How do I learn more? How do I get the documents? Right? How do, I don't want to, I don't want to write. Recreate the wheel. Why do you, why would right. You, and I have a four-year-old son. I don't want them recreating the wheel. I want them to do this as rapidly as possible. Right, right. So we created the coalition around the idea that this information, the coalition needs to cover its own costs, but, but it does not, it's not designed to make a profit. Right. And so the idea is that uh, people can join, they get all the materials, um, you know, they get access, some access to the people who, who know stuff about how meats works, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of like going to a conference, but you're, you're in it for the whole year. That's, just, way that's awesome. So what's the next step? What's the future hold now? Well, it'll be really interesting to see what happens now that the deal rolls out. I, I've been very focused over the last couple of years on getting this deal right. Sure. And uh, I, I really have found that you can waste a lot of time in your life. I have old stories I could tell you, which we don't have time for, about how, how when you're doing something like this, you can get too spread out. Mm. Right? So I get very, very focused mm. when I work on stuff like this. And uh, now that the deal is underway, I think what we're going to start doing is demonstrating to people other places how they can do the deal the same way. So gotcha. we're, we're, we're in the, okay, time to go, showtime uh, phase of the game. And we're really looking forward to that. Is, is this now, the Bullet Center was a new building. Yeah. It's going to work on new buildings. Yep. Will it also work on retrofits of older buildings? Yes. In fact, it was originally designed to work on retrofits of older buildings. We chose the Bullet Center because there were fewer moving parts, basically. And if you want to clean out the transaction structure, you don't want to be waiting on the utility to agree to the transaction structure while somebody's waiting to do construction. Right. right? So the construction was already underway. We were, just gonna, we were really just contracting around how the energy efficiency gets paid for. In a retrofit, it's actually, to some degree, it's easier because what you once everybody's clear on the transaction structure, it's easier because you already have the energy data from how the building used to perform. You know how the building performed in the past. Absolutely. Right. So you can project that information forward dynamically. That's another complication of this. We will get gotcha. to. Right. You can project that forward, and then it's really obvious the difference between what the utility used to have to deliver and what the utility is currently delivering after the retrofit. So all you're doing is metering the difference between the old building and the way the old building would have kept performing and the new building. What are the odds that this thing becomes the new paradigm that goes national and, and beyond in the, in, the, in the coming years? Well, that's a great question. Uh, what we're seeing is, uh, we're seeing two things. We're seeing um, utilities get and regulators getting concerned because they, they've already given away all the light bulbs. Like, how do they get more energy efficiency, right? Uh, and so they're running into those problems. Uh, the other problem is that, um, uh, that a couple of utilities are losing nuclear power plants, mm. big nuclear power plants. How do you replace that power? Well, you can't build a fossil facility near population anymore. They won't, people won't let you do that anymore. Right. So how do you replace that? You can't replace, it, um, you can't replace all of it from far away because you need some support locally. Um, so if they can if they can get that if they can meet that power need from efficiency at scale, then they don't need to build the next power plant. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. But you got but you can't do that giving away light bulbs. You got to do it by retrofitting these buildings deeply, right. which is of course exactly how you get more jobs. It's exactly how you create more energy stability for your economy. It's how you lower rates over time. There are all kinds of other benefits to it. And it just hasn't been possible up to now because we haven't been able to meter the energy efficiency. Now that we can meter the energy efficiency, you know, the, the world's our oyster. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. And that's a great ending for our uh, visit with Rob today. And, and Rob, you know, just very inspiring stuff. Um, for, for all of you that want to learn more about the Meats Coalition and this new paradigm that Rob and his colleagues have created, please go to www.meats coalition.org meets m-e-e-t-s coalition.org you know rob you are uh, an inspiring sustainability innovator and truly living proof that green is good thank you for being with us today thank you thank you